this on a daily basis because culture occurs fresh every day. Why is that? Because it does not belong to the organization. Culture, by definition, is created by human beings. Right? So your culture goes home at the end of every workday, and if you're really, really lucky and you've done a great job, right, it'll come back the next day as well. But the mood it comes back, right, the level of elevation it brings, the attitude it brings, the energy it brings, the commitment, the loyalty factor is negotiable every single day. Right, so just being aware of that makes you more aware, makes you more alert, and actually starts to get you to pay more attention on a daily basis to the culturing going on inside your business. Now, the reason I mention this is because of that phrase at the top there. It says the biggest mistake. So as you heard, I've been doing my job for 35 years, working with cultures across all sectors, including traditional tribes, Olympic teams, sports teams, military units, hospital units, education. So I've seen culture in every single form you could imagine. But when it comes to organizational culture, I find the biggest mistake organizations all around the world make is they think they understand what we're talking about. So do you remember I said the limited exposure, the limited expression of it? They take that slice, right, and they assume that that's what it's all about. And yet the richness of it, the depth of it, the power and influence of it is far more sophisticated and more in-depth than that. I've had the privilege of spending time in traditional cultures all around the world, in the Amazon, in Africa, and this is what they do. They cycle around. This is how they keep the culture going for tens of thousands of years. And I literally mean, in some cases, over 10,000 years, the same culture operating. Here's another interesting point. Not one of them used an engagement survey. <laughs> Why is that? Because they're actually paying attention to each other every day. Isn't that interesting? Right, they literally don't need a survey to go, so how do you feel? They know how you feel because they were listening to you yesterday when you were venting, when you were celebrating when you were grateful, when you were hurt. They listened, they paid attention, you get the idea? And they acted a accordingly. Whereas an organization going, well, sorry to hear you're suffering, but anyway, can we just get back to the project because it's due by Friday. <laughs> Our vibe and cultures at work kind of got together in the first place. The reason we were so impressed with what Vibe's all about is because this is the foundation tool in our work, right? So any organization that comes and talks to us and says, oh, we're interested in kind of talking about culture or working in culture or transforming our culture, our initial conversation with them is this model. Saying, great, tell me where you are. Tell me what, what don't you know. Tell me what you have done and what you've ignored and weren't even aware of doing. What I loved about what the Vibe offering does is if you just think about it, even if you're not that familiar, so you're not in the TA or the warehouse, you're not that familiar, you should definitely talk to the guys before you leave here or grab the brochure and check in with them. Because not to be paying attention to this is really missing a trick nowadays. And it's this. Right? So what Vibe does is make people aware and appreciate, and this is the important bit, on a daily basis, what action is taking place within the organization and what is being achieved in the organization. And that gets refreshed, right, constantly. So as Vaughan said, it's not just fixed on a poster on the wall from last September when you did that thing or finished that project, right? It's a live conversation. So for particularly if you've got millennials, have you got kind of good numbers of millennials working in your business and younger? If it's not live, they're not interested. If I get blunt, if it's not live, it's dead. Get the idea? So literally, they'll walk down a corridor if it's not moving, if it's not right, they'll ignore it. And that's not your fault. Their brains have literally, if you're familiar with the RAS, reticular activated system, the, their neural net is on search for movement, right? So they're being conditioned because of the digital age that we're in. So if we're not providing that for them, static doesn't work for them. It works brilliantly for my age, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> but for young people, right, if it's not moving, it's dead. I don't pay attention to it if it's not alive, if it's not current, if it's not, right? So even if you my, uh, are my age and kind of go, but uh, it's on the poster and it was in the memo, right? <laughs> and didn't you get the brief? The answer is, yeah. I didn't read it. I didn't pay any attention to it, right? The basic, the headline, I know you said, you know, confidential or extremely important. I just read boring and didn't go any further, right? So this is why I think the vibe initiative is so, so powerful because it's speaking to this. It's speaking into culturing, not culture. It's not fixed, it's moving. It's not dead, it's alive. It's not yesterday, it's today. It gets updated, just like that. Which is exactly what culture's doing on a daily basis, right? It's a fresh conversation every day. Or at least it should be, right? And achieving. 
Um, how many of you, for example, when I said have a conversation about what you don't know about culture, you kind of do that throwaway line, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> Did that occur at your tables? <laughs> how can we possibly know what we don't know, right? <laughs> Here's the problem with that. When it comes to culturing, that's a risk. Nowadays, in the 21st century, if you don't know what you don't know about culture, you're at risk. If you don't believe me, go and talk to the financial sector in Australia. Go and talk to the law firms in New Zealand. That's unacceptable in the 21st century. You need to know categorically what you don't know about culture and be okay with that. Do you get the idea? So you've ticked it off and go, yep, we don't know about that, but we don't perceive any risk in not knowing, therefore we're happy to move on. Or we don't know about this, we've identified there's some real risk associated with this, we've investigated, right, and we're committed next year to really get into this. You cannot not know about culture in this day and age. I'm going to show you all the data and all the reasons why. Right? So it's game on. And I've just kind of been doing this long enough now where I'm almost on a bit of a, to be honest, a bit of a mission around this because I'm just really, really tired of watching well-meaning, very intelligent, hard-working people go under because they didn't understand the culture of it, which blows my mind as an anthropologist, right? Because this is our species A game. Human beings culture. Everywhere. Always. It's the thing we're brilliant at. It's why we're the dominant species on the planet, right? Until we get inside organizations. And then we organize the living daylights out of it. We kill it through organization. Now, why would you do that? Right? And all the work you see being done inside organizations around resilience, diversity. You hearing this stuff? Mindfulness, agility, right? That's all culturing. The reason we have to do that work now is because we weren't paying attention to it in the first place. Right? So we're, we're madly scrambling now trying to play catch up in a thing that we're organically, innately, got PhDs in. Like, how did organizations miss that? It's just bizarre, right? Just bizarre.